Hello nail friends and welcome back to another Honey Doll Nails video. Today we're going to be airbrushing butterfly nail art but before we get started don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and while you're at it hit that notification bell so that you may be notified of all future videos. Hello nail friends how are you? I hope that you are well. Today we're going to be airbrushing with Apple Barrel Matte Acrylic Paint. And I'm going to be using my soft foil. I purchased this foil from Amazon. My Curafin nails from Amazon. Water decal stickers butterfly form from Amazon. And last but not least, my airbrush gun from Amazon. Everything that I'm using in this demo today will be linked in the description box below. Now, there are two different types of airbrush guns. There's one with the compressor separate from the gun, and of course you've been seeing the ones with the air compressor and the gun combo. Me personally, I like the airbrush gun separate from the compressor because it's more delicate for my wrist. Don't wanna get carpal tunnel. You know, we already have a problem anyway with all this filing with our wrist going back and forth, and sometimes your wrist can get a little stiff and, feel a little funny sometimes and so that's the reason why I like to use my compressor separate from my airbrush gun. I'm also going to be showing you some of my stencils that I have. So there are square stencils and of course they're round stencils and I'm going to show you the difference in the two. I'm not going to be using any of these stencils today but what I will do is I will link in the description box below my prior airbrush videos where I did use these stencils so you can get a little more education on what the difference in the two are. And I've been doing nails and nail art and nail healing for over 30 years and it's just something that I just love to do. Now I'm not doing nails anymore as far as like taking new clients and stuff like that but what I will do is I will do some education videos on YouTube and teach you some of the things that most nail technicians don't teach such as airbrushing it's something that was way back in the days in the 90s and the 80s but guess what it's coming back because you want to be original with your nail art and there's nothing wrong with that so here we see some wispies You see some wispies on the side and these are square airbrush stencils now you can make your own airbrush stencils if you have an exacto knife I used to do I used to cut out my own stencils but you got to make sure that whatever you're using is waterproof like plastic now you can use cardboard or even business cards to get a corner off but of course they get frayed and then your lines won't be as crispy as they normally would be so for the stencils that I purchased, I'll be leaving them in the description box below as well. Now this is a piece of mesh that is coming from a fruit basket such as lemons. When you go to the grocery store, you get a bag of lemons, they come in a mesh bag or potatoes or even onions okay you can use anything that you can spray through that has holes in it you can use it for airbrushing so this is a round stencil and as you can see it doesn't really have that much stuff on it but i wanted to show you this little star because i love that star and normally whenever i would do my clients nails i would always put a little star in the corner to let people know this is my design. I created it. That was my little symbol on the corner. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay the stencil down and make sure that when you're airbrushing you practice because if you move or shake a little bit then you will have like a shadow effect. Now if that's what you're looking for, that's super great. But as you can see as I'm laying it down you can see all the different designs that you can get from one stencil. So when I'm shopping for my stencils, I like my stencils to have all different kinds of designs in them and stuff like that. So right now we're going to use Sunny Day Matte from Apple Barrel. Um, I'm going to show you two different ways to airbrush the do's and the don'ts. So first thing I'm going to do is a don't. Okay, because I'm not using airbrush paint, I'm using acrylic paint. 
I'm not using thinned out airbrush paint just for the airbrush gun. I'm using thick, extremely thick acrylic paint. So what you want to do is you want to put a little bit of water in your airbrush gun and I'm going to show you exactly how to know if you're doing your airbrush properly. So I put a little water in my gun. I turn my gun on. I turn, excuse me, I turn my compressor on. And with this particular airbrush gun, you're gonna put water in the whale. So what I just put water in was the called the whale of the airbrush. And when you press down on the airbrush, you're gonna get air coming out. But when you pull back on the airbrush, you're gonna get water coming out if you put water in it. So you can see the water splashing off the paper. You can see the water splashing off my hand. And that lets you know I'm way too close. I got the airbrush too close to what I'm trying to airbrush. You see the water just running. This Now when you're doing painting, whether that be car painting, wall painting, or nail painting, it's still the same thing. If you're too close to whatever you're trying to airbrush, you will get the splatter effect. And that's not what you want. So I'm going to show you how to not get the splatter effect. So what most people do is they just go on ahead and they just throw a bunch of paint inside the well, which is not what you're supposed to do because you can clog up your pen and you can clog up your components inside of your airbrush gun. Airbrush gun is very complicated. If you don't know what you're doing, don't take it apart. Take it to someone that knows how to take it apart and clean it. I have been cleaning airbrush guns for a long time, so I know how to take it apart and clean it. Now look, I'm pulling back. Nothing's coming out. And the reason is because the paint is too thick. So what you should do is you should always water down your product first unless you are using airbrush paint. And airbrush paint is very expensive. And right now with the economy going sky high to the roof, this channel is all about saving money and how to still get the same effect using products for less money. So what you want to do is you want to get your little dapping dish or something small, put some water in it, take your eyedropper tool, put some water inside your airbrush gun, take your little brush and stir it around. Now you can airbrush like that, but an airbrush paint is going to be so thick it's going to take you so long to airbrush one nail. It's ridiculous. Okay, so I am gently stirring up my paint in the inside of my gun around the edges and everything like that because paint did run down on the side and that's way too thick. I'm looking at how the thick the consistency is when I laid it down on my little napkin here. It's very thick, but you want to be careful to not to bend your needle because there is a needle in the bottom of your airbrush gun and if your needle and your components aren't set properly nothing's going to come out anyway so you got to have to adjust your airbrush properly so my thing is is that if you would like to learn how to do airbrush 101 please leave me a comment in the inbox below and i will do a detailed and I mean detailed video. It will probably be more than an hour long or maybe two or three videos, so it won't be so long. To let you understand how to airbrush and how to break your airbrush down and clean it and how to fix your components so they work properly. So now you can see the airbrush is going onto the nail. Now I'm not too close up because like I said, if you're too close up, you're going to get a splatter back. You don't want splatter back everywhere. You want to pull down on the airbrush. If you press, excuse me, if you press down on the airbrush, air comes out that dries the paint. If you pull back on the airbrush, paint comes out. So you want to pull down, excuse me, press down, pull back. Press down, pull back. That's a technique. Press down, pull back. Because if you don't pull back, no paint's going to come out. So again, I say it again, you're going to press down, pull back. And the more you do it, you see I'm not so close up on it. I'm doing my edges. You dry it. Once you dry it, if you're having a problem, go in a U formation. Make a U. Make a U around what you're trying to airbrush. Go back and forth from point A to point B to make sure that you're covering all of your edges. Take your time. 
get you a piece of white cardboard or black cardboard something that you can buy from the Dollar Tree and airbrush on that cardboard you can still lay down your stencils on the cardboard and make designs on the cardboard and when you figure that out and when you get that just right then you know you're ready to do a nail there's no hurry in learning how to do airbrushing because most people do ombres different ways I just think that doing an ombre airbrush is prettier it takes a little more time but you can make more money doing it so with a regular ombre set with a full set of nails, you're charging $85. You break out your airbrush gun, that bumps it up to $125, you see? Because back in the 90s, they were charging $5 a color. But now, you charge whatever you want to because nail art has taken on a new form. So you see I'm making circles now. I'm going back and forth now. You know, I'm doing what makes me feel comfortable because I've been airbrushing for a long time. But when I first started airbrushing, I was making all types of mistakes. I was. So I'm only going to do an ombre on one nail. And the rest of them, I'm going to foil along with the ombre foil. And then put on my butterflies. Alright. So I'm going to let you enjoy this video. And I'll be back a little later with the reveal.
All right, so we are done with our airbrushing and now we're at the part where I put on the foil glue and I dried it for three minutes. You don't have to dry it um, for six or 10 minutes, just three minutes would do. And now I'm gonna use my soft foil and I'm gonna show you what I mean by soft foil. You just take your time and whatever, wherever you want to place the foil, you just place it down and pull off. So it's just a place down, pull off situation. So we're just gonna press down, pull back. And when it comes down to these rainbow foils, if you want to get every last color, just turn the foil. Um, I let it come out the way it wants to. I have no rhyme or reason how this is looking. It's looking however it wants to look. Uh, when I get satisfied with that nail and I'm done, then I move on to the next one. Okay, this one, I'm gonna go all the way across the bottom. I don't want it completely covering it. I want it to look worn and torn. So I'm just gonna pull back now. And as you can see, it looks like I half did it. I want it to look that way. Now, if you keep rubbing it, rubbing it, rubbing it, you can get the whole thing to be completely covered, but that would just not do for me. <laughs> I like to show a little bit of this and a little bit of that when I'm doing my nail art. It doesn't have to be perfect because when I lay these butterflies down, then you're going to see what we're talking about. It has no rhyme or reason when it comes down to freestyle, like real true freestyle. Yeah. So like I said before, welcome all my new subscribers. God bless you all. If there is something that you would like to see me attempt to do, because that's what I do, I attempt to do things when it comes down to nails. Nobody's perfect. Um, in the description box below, please just leave me a comment and let me know what you would like to see next. If you would like to see a whole demo on how to do airbrush and how to break down the airbrush gun, like I said before, just let me know in the description box below. Okay, so now I'm gonna get some water out because we're doing water decals. I'm gonna pull off my top cellophane because a lot, a lot of times when I was younger and I would cut up these butterflies or whatever, I would forget to pull off the top and it wouldn't, the product wouldn't slide. And I'm like, why isn't this product sliding off? And then by the time you pull that cellophane off, your product is stuck to it. So just don't forget to do that. And then of course, when I'm finished with it, the rest of it. I'm going to put the rest of it back inside of a plastic um, bag anyway. One thing about water decals, you do not want them to get wet or damp because they're not going to be any more good. That's the reason why they put cellophane on the front of them. Just going to dip them in water. Doesn't take much. Just dip it in water and lay it down and let the water uh, drain off on a paper towel. And I'm just going to randomly lay these butterflies down any kind of way. However they lay down, that's the way it's going to be. I'm not trying to make it look any way special. I'm just going to lay them across. Actually, the set came out better than I thought that it would because I mixed so many colors together in this particular demo. I really didn't know how it was going to turn out when I was first putting it together. But in the end, it turned out really beautiful. Alright, so I'm just setting everything up and getting everything ready. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok pages. Don't forget to follow me on those pages. I will be having another giveaway around Christmas time and you don't want to miss that because I'll be giving away nails. I'll be giving away nail products and I'll be giving away some of my own personal nail products that I have made in a big gift box for someone. 
So you definitely want to be subscribed to all of my social media pages to be eligible to win. So I'm going to let you finish watching this video. And in the end of this video, there's going to be a reveal and a little small video as well. Thank you very much for tuning in to this episode of Honey Doll Nails. And until I see you next time, God bless you and have a wonderful day.